The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to get my chart up here, folks. For some reason, my chart's just caught out and my says my session expired, but they're coming back up. Give me one moment. There they are. I'm going to hit the button, jump over to my screens, load it, and we got my charts live back again. And we need charts today, folks, because this market is rocking. We got the S&Ps right now. You're up 45 points on a pretty hot CPI number, but on the core number, put out a newsletter to my subscribers yesterday, folks, saying pay attention to the core number, man. Uh, energy prices, they're going to make the headline number be dramatic no matter what, but the market may care a little bit more about what's happening on the core aspect because we all know that energy prices are out of control right now with oil around $100. Core number comes in a little bit soft, and, man, that market takes it and runs with it, man. We got the S&Ps up an even 1% right now. You're up 44 points, trading at 44.52 right now. We have the NASDAQ 100 up 242 points. Look at this acceleration, man. You're up 340 points about from where you were overnight, folks. Things looking a little dire last night. 13,902, just like that. Look at that pop on the CPI data. 14,238. The Dow up 184 points right now. We just traded up 400 points from the overnight lows. And the Russell back over 2,000. Bitcoin catching a bid with the market back above 40,000 to 40,480. Crude. Catching a bit as well. We make it to $92 yesterday. Just like that, we're back to $98 in the price of crude, up about $4. Gold contract catching a bit as well, $19.77. Gold's up $29. That's 1.5%. And we jump over to notes and bonds. Little bit of a reversal of the price action we have been getting, folks. Now, here's what I'll say. Uh, yes. We're at 2.72%, folks. We're getting a little bit of a pop in the price. But you take a look at this chart, man. Of course, you're going to get a pop in the price at some point, folks. You just traded from a 129 handle to a 119 handle in about a month, folks. Okay, even if you get back within this channel line, lower prices, higher yield, they're coming at us. But eventually, you're going to get a little bit of a reprieve in terms of the 10-year oversold right now that would be the case and boy this market it's going to be an interesting open folks we're 22 minutes away from that opening bell and let's jump into the inflation numbers headline number this is what you're going to see out there for the headline number 8.5 percent quite a number man it is real folks too uh Households, you don't get to take food and energy out of your household expenditures, folks. That's a real number versus last year, April of 2021. We are paying 8.5% for consumer prices more than we were one year ago, uh, the most since 1981. That was following a 7.9% gain in February. We knew the numbers were going to be high. Energy prices put, pushing that up in a big way. Uh, now, we jump down to the core number because this is what I want to focus on. It's what the market's focusing on, in my opinion, right now. Core prices from a month ago, only 0.3% from a month earlier, only 6.5%. Now, 6.5%, when you take out food and energy, what do you think about the number of just the pure dollars that we spend on food and energy. And when you think about the rising costs of food that we all know, grocery store, uh, let alone energy and gas prices going up, take those out of the equation and we're still paying 6.5% from a year ago, but both of those numbers less than what the market was looking for. Uh, treasuries, of course, rising on a year over year basis, goods, inflation, excluding food and energy and used vehicles rising 8.1% in March. That adds the used vehicles in there because used vehicles are just bonkers. Now, used vehicles pulling back a lot, okay, this month. Uh, if you're thinking about getting rid of a used car, folks, buying something new, go out and do it now. Services increased 5.1% from a year ago, the biggest advance since 1991. Airline fares, 10.7% in March from a month earlier. Did you see that? 
from a month earlier shelter costs which include rent and hotels 0.5 percent for a second month that's what it was last one and here you go used car prices down 3.8 percent in march second straight monthly decline new car prices meanwhile rising slightly if you're thinking about getting a new car if you're thinking about trading in a used car it's not too late i would encourage you to go out and do it prices for household furnishings furnishings and supplies rose one percent in february uh energy costs as we all know Spiking in a big way, the CPI report showed that energy prices rose 11% in March from the prior month, the most since 2005. Gas prices, 18.3%, largest gain since 2009. That said, here we go, gas prices have started to decline in recent weeks, in part because of sinking demand in China, where several major cities are under lockdown. If sustained, the drop suggests that energy prices will have less of an impact on inflation in April. It's going to be an interesting one in April. Uh, even so, inflation projected to stay near 6% by the end of the year. That's going to keep pressure on the Fed as they talk about, but maybe for the first time in a while, a slight reprieve. I mean, I'm going to just say the slightest of slight. How about that? Is that English? The slightest of slight reprieves. And I'm half kidding, folks. But the market is just catching a breather right now, okay? It's up 37 points. The core number comes in a little bit soft. I'm going to check this out as well as we come into the break. We're going to be talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market coming after the break. Can't wait to get his take on this. Uh, but, boy, it's going to be an interesting open, folks, because this is quite an acceleration to higher prices when we get an 8.5% number. And yes, <coughs> excuse me, you're talking about a core number at 0.3%. But folks, that's still a 0.3% core number when we're dealing with oil at $100. We're dealing with food prices that are elevated substantially. But for the first time, maybe a little bit of waning in terms of the trends, okay? You want the trend to be on your side. The trend has been accelerating to higher prices. Maybe we've reached a slight peak, and I say maybe many times, folks, so because we don't know yet. And the Fed's going to say they don't know yet either, okay? They need more data. The Fed was very aware where this number was going to come in, in my opinion. Uh, the interesting stuff for data folks is going to come in the next three or six months they're going to be hiking they're still probably coming with 50 basis points okay um but maybe the market is thinking at this point that they might be able to get inflation under control if already the core number is back to 0.3 percent all right if they're bringing the heat with 50 basis points maybe they bring it with a couple meetings if you're already seeing core prices at only 0.3%, maybe you see energy going to wane a bit as well. I say that, though, and we got crude up $4.18 right now to $98.46. Keep that in mind. Uh, and the market now, S&P, given back almost 15 points from the high we're at. You came into that number at 44.15, so you pop about 30 points. The NASDAQ 100, man, you just popped about 200 points from where we're at. We were trading at 14,040. You're now trading at 14,218. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how we're trading this morning. We'll kick it off with Apple. Apple shares jump about $2.50. We're at 168.28. You were trading at 165 75 as of the close yesterday. <coughs> Microsoft shares right now up a few dollars to 288. Man, Microsoft really pulling back yesterday. <coughs> excuse me, folks. Still battling a little bit of a cold. Uh, 285 down. Uh, excuse me, up $3, but man, look at that move. Now, this is a daily, okay? This is not tying in this morning's action, but boy, Microsoft, that was quite a leap yesterday. Uh, and there were a couple notes put out on Microsoft. That was not just the market talking about maybe having some problem with uh, Microsoft 365, waning numbers, et cetera. But Microsoft catching a $3 bid. We jump over to King Dog. Amazon shares up about 50 bucks to 3,078 right now. Let's check out Tesla. Mr. Elon Musk back above 1,000 at 1,001. Stay tuned, folks. S&P's up 36. We'll be coming back with our man, Kevin Hinks. Stay tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up 35 points right now. NASDAQ 100 futures up 215 points right now. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time on the TD Ameritrade Network. Fast Market, your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They break down the day's market action, walk you through hypothetical trade setups, folks. You're talking about option options. You're talking defined risk. And boy, you're talking about some volatility today. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Well, we've been talking about this number for about a week or so as being a number that might be explosive and the expectations were big and at least the headline number delivered on those but it was the core tommy the x food and energy number and some of the metrics frankly within the number that really gave this market a little bit of, re of a relief rally that we're looking at here we'll you know we'll see how this day plays out but um you know with the 10-year yield now back down towards 2.272 here uh we're getting a little bit of a relief rally tommy and not really surprising frankly you've been talking about kevin that 10-year uh oversold i got it up on the thinker swim platform here man you put it on a daily basis and this run that it's had from march 7th with a 129 handle we get down to a 119 handle and just kevin since the overnight session i know you're looking at it man but we just traded up almost a full point um no more yeah. than a full point we we're at 119.10 and we're trading at 120.10 right now uh in the 10-year and the core number as you put it 0.3 percent on a monthly basis kevin i think i saw that's the lowest number since September of last year. Uh, what's your take on the core number and maybe where that might lead things? You think this market, and it's going to be an interesting open in 10 minutes, man, for sure. But what do you think about 0.3% on a monthly? You're always telling us, watch the monthly, right? Everybody knows the last right. 11 months. We're just looking at the last month coming in. What do you think about that 0.3%? Yeah, and, and that number, X Food and Energy, which the energy numbers delivered, they were crazy. They were energy up 11%, you, uh, gasoline up 18.3, energy, uh, energy commodities up 18.1, fuel oil up 22.3%. No, that's not annual, that's a month. So, <laughs> but here's Tommy commodities 
less food and energy, down 0.4. Used cars and trucks, down 3.8%. So you are starting to see some peak in some of the, remember, this number was measured right during the peak of the uh, Russia-Ukraine uh, war. So you knew that energy prices were going to be volatile and up there. But even energy has already come down from those peak levels. So the question that traders are going to have to, have to ask themselves today, are we seeing peak inflation? Did we see it? And if so, if this 10-year yield settles in here, between 2.6 and 2.8 percent, what does that do for the market going forward? And so, at least now, the initial reaction: market likes it, Tommy. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. It at least gives gives uh, maybe some some hope that, that we're kind of reaching maybe a pendulum that we get a little bit of a swing um, when you hear that the core number rising the slowest since we've seen since September. Uh, that of course going to give you a little hope that maybe we're seeing kind of some of those trends shifting a little bit. You talked about the used car prices down for the second month, three point eight percent. I think I saw new new car prices edging up a little bit. So maybe those kind of weird tendencies during the pandemic starting to sort themselves out maybe just in the tiniest bit um, but nonetheless man the market poof they try and market Kevin as we say it's a leading indicator and it's trying to lead right now as in get ahead of the the trends and up 204 right now in the Nasdaq 100 futures it's gonna be an interesting open uh, we jump to some of the banks Kevin I wanted to ask you about so pretty interesting the swings we're getting in the 10 year I think we saw a high yield overnight of 2.82 percent and just like that we're down to tenth of a percent back to 2.72 percent we get some of the banks kicking things off this week uh, I think get yep. Wells Fargo <laughs> Goldman Morgan Stanley City What's your take on some of these banks, man? It's been a tough go around as we've seen yields coming up. Of course, you got inflationary, uh, excuse me, just recessionary talk out there. What's your take as we come into bank earnings this week, kicking things off? Well, we're going to trade J.P. Morgan on today's show, as well as Delta Airlines and Bed Bath & Beyond. So we'll start looking at the banks as of today as they come out with earnings. You know, uh, J.P. Morgan is first tomorrow morning, then you'll get Goldman, City, Morgan Stanley, and Wells Fargo on Thursday or on Wednesday. So, or yeah, Thursday morning, sorry. So, there'll be a lot for us to talk about in those. But, you know, you're right, Tommy. The banks have had a rough run. And why is that? Why have the banks have had a rough run? Well, even though yields are going up, the yield curve is flattened, right? Where they, and that affects some of their profit margins as well. So, even though an overall rising yield environment is good for the banks. A flattened yield curve takes away some of that luster. Now, if this starts to unwind a little bit and yields settle in here at 2.7, but the yield curve starts to steepen, well, that's better for the banks. And they've made a rally, a comeback here the last couple of days, but they've been under pressure. You know, J.P. Morgan was as high as $170. It's now 133 So it's not like these banks have gone straight up as, rates have gone up you know you got bank of america that that was fifty dollars now it's thirty nine dollars so you know the banks coming out with earnings the next couple of days should be fairly interesting to and we're going to go over them all the next couple of days tommy this one man i'm trying to wrap my head around it and you make some great points man and that is what's driving this market but when you think about where yields were kevin back in just last year middle last year i mean jp morgan i got it up right now on a weekly just pulling on the thinkorswim platform last year you were chopping around between about 150 and 170 you started the year off at 130 almost where we're at right now at a time w would many have thought and i'm answering you know no you wouldn't have thought that as we have yields rising to 2.8 percent that you'd see jp morgan back to 133 i just pulled it up they got a dividend yield of about three percent at these prices um I'm trying to wrap my head around that one, man. But as we know, there's a lot going on in these equities. Well, Kevin, man, we appreciate the time, the education. So we're talking J.P. Morgan, which is great because that's what I wanted to talk about myself. But then, yeah, as you talk about, we have Bed Bath & Beyond and Delta Airlines. Now, real quick, Kevin, Delta, I've been talking about for a while, man, that eventually, and I'm not the only one, travel stocks will catch a bid, man. Really interesting, though. The same thing, like J.P. Morgan, you get the banks dealing with two different issues, right? You got the high yields, they're going to help them, and then you got everything else going on that may hurt them. The airlines, you have so much demand going on for those travel stocks, but we have oil at like $100 right now. What's kind of, give us a little teaser for the Delta uh, take coming up on Fast Market at 12 today. Well, you know, the U.S. is going through a pretty 
solid economic recovery right now. And you're seeing it in the travel stocks. And, you know, that's not only the airlines, but Expedia and bookings. And this whole sector is having a nice little comeback here. I mean, Delta got down to, you know, below $30 not very yeah. long ago at, at, at the beginning of end of February, beginning of March. Now Crazy. it's back up to 38 and probably going to be up up this morning again. So, yeah, the airlines, here's the thing, Tommy, the airlines are a volatile trade when things are normal, when the economy is normal. So they're even more volatile now. So, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be, um, it's, you know, the, these are all, it, it's going to be a big market made up of a bunch of little individual stories, Tommy. That's that's the deal, man, for sure. Well, Kevin, we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us, man, and we look forward to the program at 12 today. They say it's going to be an interesting one, but today especially. We got we got three and a half minutes till the opening bell, Kevin, and uh, we'll be looking forward to your program at 12 noon today, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure, Kevin. You have a great one as well. Folks, check it out. 12 noon Eastern time, Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hanks, Tom White. You talk about experience, folks. Check it out. Today's going to be a great one. We'll be right back for the opening bell, folks. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got the S&Ps right now. Giving back some of those gains pre-market, you're still up 27 points. That's about a six tenths percent pop to the upside. NASDAQ 100, Europe 1.3 percent. Uh, and that's after giving up about 100 points from where we were pre-market. Dow giving it back a little bit as well. We're positive by 90. Russell positive by 1.25 percent, sitting right at above 2,000. We jump to some of the commodities. Crude oil. $99 and nine pennies, eight pennies make it as we speak. And we got the gold contract right now, catching a bid up $27 to 1975. Let's jump around to some of the FAG stocks, see how we're opening up. Amazon shares up 1.5% right now. Apple shares up a percent right now. Microsoft up a percent right now. Google shares up a percent. We'll finish it off with Tesla shares up 2% at 996. Market giving back some of those gains going to be interesting to see uh, how important that core number is to this market as we move through the trading day right now we're only a minute and 15 seconds into that trading day all right let's jump around to what else we have going on we'll jump down to some of the stocks with action i'm going to kick it off with carmax they were lower in the pre-market we'll see how they're trading on the open they miss on earnings they beat on revenue used cars down 3.8 percent uh speaking of fast market folks they did a great segment on Fast Market yesterday, talking about CarMax. Uh, I talk to Kevin every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, folks. They do the program Monday through Friday at 12 noon Eastern time. They got a lot of great stuff on there beyond the hypothetical trade setups that they do in options. I encourage you to check it out. Now, CarMax, it's going to be interesting to see how they come out of this car uh, used car deal. Yeah, you're giving it back a little bit on the open, down 5.2% right now. We pull up a weekly. And they were already dealing with some tough expectations. You trade from 155.98 when used cars were just bonkers up there. You're down to 98 bucks, and you're basically back to where you were prior to COVID, uh, which is saying a lot when you think about how much they may have benefited on the used car market accelerating higher. And nonetheless, you're back to 98.14 for CarMax market holding on to some of those gains. We jump around to what else we have going on. PG&E, they're, they're higher. They reached a deal with Northern California, having to deal with some of the fires. Uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprises, they were a little bit lower. They get a downgrade at Morgan Stanley from to underweight from equal weight. Let's see how they're trading HPE. Yeah, down about 1.9% when the market's rocking higher. CrowdStrike, this one's been an interesting company. Let's pull up CrowdStrike first. CRWD is their symbol. CrowdStrike pulls right back to the 50% of the entire run you had for COVID this morning. Now, that's a weekly. We put it back on the daily. Today, catching a little bit of a pop. You're back to kind of this area that we've had a little bit of resistance in, though. CrowdStrike up 4.5% right now to 226. Uh, Albertsons. Earn 75 cents a share, 11 above estimates, revenue above estimates as well, able to effectively deal with increased supply chain and product costs. You know how they were? I'm guessing they raised prices, folks. Uh, ACI is their symbol. And they're down 3.1%, catching a little bit of a bid on the open there. But yeah, that's a tough go around for Albertsons. Uh, so they beat on earnings, they beat on revenue. I'm guessing the outlook is not as big as they would like. Deutsche Bank, so uh, insiders selling Deutsche Bank and undeclosed shareholders sold 5% stake in both Deutsche Bank and rival German lender Commerce Bank, generating a total of about $1.9 billion. Um, I would not be touching Deutsche Bank, folks. Uh, let's put this thing on a daily. You're at 11.83. Yeah, I, if you want to get some banks, check out Fast Market at 12. They're going to be talking about J.P. Morgan. And boy, if you're looking to get in some of these equity soaks, now J.P. Morgan, you're down a percent today. We take out the weekly, though. I mean, pretty remarkable, as I talked about with Kevin, considering where yields were back in the middle of last year. Um, if you have greater aspirations than the, what the market's looking for in terms of how it's pricing in a recession, might not be a bad deal. You're getting a 3% dividend at these rates for J.P. Morgan. I'll be interested to see what they have to say on fast market coming at, at 12 myself. In this market, it's waning a bit. We got the S&Ps down, uh, excuse me, up 25 well, look at that sell-off, folks. We just came back. We were up at 44.62. You're off almost 30 points from where we were on that flash high just about 40 minutes ago prior to 9 a.m. Eastern time this morning. And what else we got? Cisco gets a downgrade to sell from neutral, saying the networking equipment competitors, Juniper Networks and Arista Networks, are poised to gain market share from Cisco. Uh, let's jump over to these real quick. Cisco, CSCO. That's a five-minute chart. They catch a bid at the open. You're only down about eight-tenths percent. Juniper up eight-tenths percent. We take a look at a little bit of a longer-term chart. I mean, yeah, check out that chart. That's the one I wanted to get you. This stock has been so strong, man. Last year, you open at about 23. You're trading at 35. 
Compare that to Cisco. Uh, you opened at 44. You give back a lot of those gains earlier this year from 64 to 52. Uh, Cisco, though, what I will say, you're in kind of a nice area here that's found support on a couple occasions. If you're looking for a trade in Cisco, not sure I'd be getting in just yet. You're down six tenths percent when you get the market trading higher. But maybe get back to a slight area that you might be finding a bid for Cisco shares. All right, what else we got up here? Let's see. Yeah, so let's jump into the CarMax a little bit more. Um, fell in early trading, fourth quarter used vehicle sales, missed estimates, soaring prices and anxiety over the economy, keeping some customers away. Declining consumer confidence and affordability, 6.5% drop in the number of used cars it sold last quarter. Now, you tie this together with the number we just got, right? CPI data, we had used car prices down 3.8% this month following a decrease the prior month. As I said, folks, if you're getting rid of a used car, go do it ASAP. That would be my encouragement. Uh, average price of a car rose 40% or $8,300 in the period ending February 28th compared with a year ago. That is bonkers. There's no other way to put it. That is a technical term, bonkers, folks. It is. Think about it. The average prices of a car rising 40%. Just absolutely amazing. Um, price to move. Used car prices are beginning to slip after surging in the pandemic, so check it out. Right? Now, we've had a little bit of a wane before, but my estimate would be, folks, that there's, n I mean, we hear it all the time. People go and buy a car, and you hear that used car prices are almost more expensive than new car prices. All right? That's not how the world works, folks. Eventually, they're going to meander back to the mean, navigate back to the mean. Um, and, and you're seeing that play out in the used car prices. And that was one of the areas hit hardest for the pandemic, right? We got chip shortages, you got a shortage of new vehicles. <clears throat> and what I will say in general, folks, is that in normal times, you get that pullback. Um, going out and getting a vehicle that's, you know, one, two, three years old, usually it's a pretty good deal, right? You, you, you avoid that sell off of the price of a, new, of a new vehicle, it's still pretty new. But that's not what's going on right now. You got a vehicle that's anything that you're thinking about getting rid of that's used, I would go out and get rid of it ASAP, especially if you're thinking about getting into something new, because those trends are going to get back to normal, and you're seeing it already with used vehicles down 3.8% on a monthly basis, folks, monthly. Okay, that is quite a drop when you put it on a monthly basis. But keep in mind, they went up 40% over the last year. Eventually, that should meander back to, you know, maybe it's going to settle up 10%. Maybe it's going to settle up 15 Maybe they're going to settle up 20%, but they're, they're probably not going to settle up 40% on the used market, which is where they're almost sitting right now. All right, let's jump around to some of these markets as we come into the break right now. We'll put it back on a 15-minute, and you get the market sitting basically just where we're sitting. Uh, as in, you're just kind of settling right here. S&P's up 7 tenths percent. NASDAQ 100 up just, prior, just shy of 1% right now. And let's jump to the all-important notes and bonds. So there's really no give back there. Interesting that when you have the market giving back some of the gains, you don't have the 10-year giving back some of the gains, man. You're sitting at 120.10, almost right at the spike we got. Stay tuned, folks. We've got a few other equities to go over. We'll be right back in three minutes. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 33 points right now. Interesting action. So S&Ps catch a little bit of a bid in the last few minutes. NASDAQ 100, not so much. No green bars there. They're still up 1%, though, in the NASDAQ 100. Now, I'm going to jump over real quick to the Bloomberg article I've got pulled up here. The headline is, Treasury yield surge to threaten bull runs last resistance line. I said to myself, what resistance line are they talking about? Uh, you pull it up. Interesting action here. So this goes back to talk about a long-term chart, man. This is the yield on the 10-year, okay? And yeah, that is quite an acceleration to a trend line. Um, I would guess we're going to go through that trend line, folks. Now, our man Kevin Hinks, he has talked about it. Might not be just yet, okay? We might get uh, quite a pause when you look at this acceleration that we've had recently. But I imagine we're going higher, folks. That is my estimate, okay? You got the 10-year at pretty low levels when you got still inflationary numbers at very lofty levels, to put it lightly. Now, here's what I'll do as I jumped over to some of the action on just the price action. Now, the 10-year for me, when I put it on a max, only goes back to about 2000, what, 2002, 2003, for whatever reason, on a continuous basis. Um, but if you take a look at the 30-year, just out of curiosity, look where we are. Interesting action in terms of where we are, folks. That's going back to 1999. Now, this chart they had up here goes back to, you know, the 80s, the 90s, uh, probably even the 70s back here. Maybe that's 1980 back here. But again, we're technicians, a lot of us, and that's kind of a pretty important area when you look at that trend line going back to 19, no, back to the year, yeah, December of 99. You had the third year with price action of 90. You're sitting at 142 right now. Now, here's what I'll say, folks. Okay, now this article, which is interesting, it talks about here, if you're close to retirement and you got your money in treasuries or any type of fixed income like they're talking about here, um, total returns in treasuries this year, folks, slumped 8%. That's just as of now. Worst annual decline since 1970. Three. I've been talking about it for a while, folks. Okay, the 60-40 split uh, of portfolio diversification has not gone through a period that we may have right now for some time, and that's putting it lightly. And when you get 
this type of a rise in yields, you get a destruction in price. Now, yes, if you are holding things through expiration, okay, you're getting the yield you want, but that's not often what happens, folks. So many people will get into an, you know, a, a treasury fund or something like that. They'll think that's the fixed income part of their portfolio that's protected, and little do they know that you're down 8% in that portion of your portfolio this year. So be careful on that one in a big way. Um, but interesting action when you look at where we are in terms of the yield on the 10-year spiking up to that trend line. Now, an ode to our man Bud Rolfs, folks, when you're talking about channels, okay? Now, this you could call this a channel. You could call it a channel that got a little bit out of whack on the downside, okay? But when you break out of a channel, the real key is you want to see a break out of that channel. You want to see it come back and test that trend line and then trade higher. If that happens, watch out, folks. And it's totally possible. Uh, the data is going to be a big part that's going to drive the Fed, and we are really going to get some interesting action over the next three or six months. Uh, the market almost just breathing a sigh of relief, I would say, on this number in terms of n not getting an expectation that, uh, a beat versus expectation. Core number up 0.3%. And again, the expectation on the core number on a monthly basis was 0.5%. The reason why this is especially important is because that's a big difference on a monthly basis. Percentage-wise, now percentages on very small numbers are totally deceiving, okay? But, you know, 0.3% off of 0.5, that's a 60% number, right? 0.3% is only a 60% rise of the 0.5% they were expecting. If you ever push that onto an annual basis, on a monthly basis, if prices are rising 0.5%, that's a 6% number that you'll get on a year. If you got 12 months at 0.5%, you're going to have a 6% rise on a yearly basis if you don't compound. I know there'd probably be some compounding there if you're going up every month. But for simple math, let's not compound it. 0.5% is 6%. Wow, we came in at 0.3%. That's only 3.6%, folks. So on a monthly basis, core numbers are going up 3.6% right now if you carry it out 12 months. Market was looking for a number that was going to push it at almost 6%. There's where you see that the trend can really shift where we are, where we're going, and what the market's looking at. Uh, I talked about it on my newsletter yesterday, folks. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. I think I had it up, did I? Yeah, just here. Let me just say, because this is something I would keep in mind, because this is going to be a trend that is going to continue, folks. Next month's CPI data, when we get it, all right, this is a note I put out to subscribers yesterday, and here's the one I want to focus on, all right? We get the CPI at 830. Expectation is 8.4%. Here's the part I want to focus on. I will be more interested in the core number, which takes out food and energy as the energy component will likely skew the numbers dramatically to the upside, and the market may dismiss a miss. If it has to do with oil, the core number is expected to rise 6.6%, which is still amazing, uh, even without those two components. But I'm more interested in the core number. Guess what? The market's more interested in that number, too, this morning, folks. And that is going to continue in a big way. I also said J.P. Morgan it kicks it off on Wednesday, as our man Kevin Hinks was talking about. Uh, now, J.P. Morgan catching a little bit of a bid on the open. Check that out. You're up six-tenths percent ahead of their number. You jump over to the Analyze tab. You're looking at a $5 move coming into their earnings. That's a pretty decent move for the bank earnings. They don't normally move too dramatic when you talk about the bank earnings in terms of what they're doing. You do get a dividend yield of 3% with this company. Uh, I do not have any JP Morgan, folks, uh, but I'm looking at it. And I would encourage you to take a look at it, too, because it would make sense, in my opinion, to be a little bit diversified to some of the banks at this price level, okay? When banks are pushing 173, when they're pushing 170, a little bit harder to rationalize, but when you're pushing 134, you got a 3% dividend yield, you got inflation out of control, and you have yields on the rise, it might help you wane some of the volatility going on in this market. And as I speak, the market's catching a bid for the second time this morning. As we now have the S&Ps up 45 points, let's put it back to a five-minute chart, and we're going to be pushing the highs. We have this market, man, watch out. This is going to be an interesting one, folks. Uh, not a lot of days like today. We're very fortunate with the market we have as traders right now. Look at the Dow. Look just what happened with the Dow. So much for a sell-off. These are five-minute charts, folks. The Dow just traded, look at this, just, just from where we were at 9 in the morning, you trade down 150 points. And then the market opens and we trade up 200 points in the Dow. S&Ps from 44.60 to almost 44.30 back to 44.53. Uh, let's jump around to some of those Dow stocks. Walmart shares 
up about four tenths percent right now. McDonald's up about two tenths percent right now. Everything's going to be in the green, uh, mostly in this market. And look at the Russell up two percent right now. Crude nearing one hundred dollars yet again, and gold giving back some of those gains up twenty dollars right now for the gold truck contract at nineteen sixty eight. All right, what else we got pulled up here to discuss? Let me take a look. What are we talking about? Uh, yeah, airports. We got a couple. We're going to take a break, folks. We're going to talk about Apple. They're going to be talking about their watch 2024 for blood pressure, but we're also going to be talking about airports. Uh, this is the interesting one. So airports are clogged with queues as travel rebounds, strains, resources, labor shortages. I mean, I talked about Kevin. They're going to be talking about Delta Airlines. Delta uh, with their earnings this week as well. We'll take a look at some of those travel stocks. Delta up six tenths percent right now. Quite the charge higher yesterday as you had travel stocks rocking higher. Oh, boy, you look at this stock, right? Not even close to where we were prior to COVID. We'll take a look at some of the domestic airlines as well. We'll take a look at the cruise ships, too. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And uh, boy, don't sleep on these markets for a moment, man. S&P is now up 1.23%. 
we get an acceleration right out of the gate, folks. You accelerate on the CPI data. We pull back from about 9 till 9.30, and the markets take it and run with it. We're up about 30 points just from where you were on the opening bell, folks. And you're talking about the NASDAQ 100 now right back to basically the highs pre-market, 14,250. Europe, 1.8%. Dow up a percent as well, and the Russell up 2.4%. Folks, the Russell... If you look where we were negative territory pre-market, you were negative by 34 points going into the pre-market. You're positive. Um, no, excuse me. You were under 2,000 by 34 points. You're now above it by 23. That's talking about, what, 57 points that we've claimed. That's about a 3% pop, folks, from where you were just at about 4 a.m. in the Russell 2000. Yeah, that TNA, man, dancing, dancing in a big way. All right, let's jump on to some of those travel stocks. Delta up about eight tenths percent right now. Now, putting things on a little bit of a longer term basis, as I talked about, interesting action on Delta gets down right to that 618. Kevin talked about it. You actually got a 29 handle on Delta shares back at that low. We're back to about 38 right now. We jump to some of the other airlines. American gets all the way to the 786 of where it was. You jump to United shares. Almost gives it all back. They get 100% for United shares. Now we jump domestically real quick. JetBlue below the 618, man. This one is a head scratcher in a big way. Now oil prices, folks, that's what a big part of this is. It's oil prices, it's wages, right? It's it's cost of doing business for these airlines, even if they have um, huge demand to the upside. And then we jump to Carnival, though, okay? We jump to some of the cruise ships. Now, just recently, forget what day it was. I think it was sometime last last week. Maybe it was one of, maybe it was a couple days ago. Uh, they came out. Carnival said they had the most bookings ever in a weekly period from the end of March to the beginning of April. But all I'll say is keep your eye on the trends, folks. We got quite a downtrend channel on Carnival. That's a weekly basis. We put it back to a daily real quick as we wrap things up. And yeah, I would look for this thing to break out of there. Breaks out of there, trust, test that channel line. Maybe we're getting back into it. Boeing's another one to take a look at. Look where Boeing is, right near that bottom of that channel line. I've been looking at Boeing as well. Not a bad entry, uh, if you're thinking about it. Boeing, a little bit of woes, but up 1.1%. Gonna be an interesting one, folks. Stay tuned, and don't forget, I wanted to talk about it. Basil Chapman's coming up, but he has a live webinar tomorrow, folks. Go sign up for it so you can access it. Have a great Tuesday.